Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. I am your host, David Dodge, and today I am super happy to be bringing on Henry Washington. I met Henry down in Key West, Florida a couple weeks ago at a, at a conference. It was a coaching conference, and man, am I glad I met Henry. Henry has some really, really cool stuff for us today. He actually teaches people has courses and a program about how to be a buy and hold investor, not just how to be a buy and hold investor, but how to do it the right way and how to be successful at it. Henry, welcome to the show, my man. How are you today? Doing well, sir. I'm well. Thank you for having me, man. I'm, I'm excited. Awesome. Well, I'm happy to have you here. So right before we started this episode, I was uh, chit-chatting here with Henry and I was like, man, I am so happy to have you on the show today. Because we don't really come across that many coaches that are buy and hold coaches. So I'm just super excited to, to talk to Henry and use this opportunity to get to know him a little bit better. Everybody and their brother wants to teach you how to wholesale and how to market <laughs> yeah. and you know how to maybe do some creative finance or whatever it is. But when it comes to buy and hold, you know, I don't want to say it's boring because that's not the case at all, but it's not shiny. It's not sexy, right? It's yeah. not sexy. That's the word I'm right. looking for. It's not yeah. sexy. But you know what, though? The guys that really get good at the, at the buy and hold are the ones that can retire and not have to worry about anything. You know, wholesaling is a great option. It's a job, though. Right. Fixing flipping, another great option. Pros and cons, but it's a job. Right. Whenever you start getting yourself into these long-term holds, that's the forever check. So again, I'm just super happy to have Henry on the show here. Um, Henry's got a couple courses that he offers as well as, again, a program, a coaching program, an inner circle type of a thing to help those that are looking to get into the buy and hold game. Henry, I'm going to hand it off to you, man. Tell us a little bit about who Henry is and uh, what you've been up to in, in the real estate game. How long you've been in the game? Oh, man, three years, 10 months, three years, 10 months been in the game. Nice. Uh, yeah, man. I uh, my 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 uh, Wolverine origin story is I was uh, uh, so back back in my single single guy days. Uh, I had a great job um, working for a large retailer out here. So I was a uh, data analytics, computer information systems, you know, a techie kind of a kind of a job, nerdy guy. And uh, made great money, but also got really good at spending money. And so I spent a lot, I spent more than I made usually. Uh, so I was excellent at spending it. And uh, that is, was an okay lifestyle for me as a single guy, but I got married pretty quick. Uh, my wife and I married about a year to the, well, we married a year to the day that we met. And so. Wow. That's I went cool. through a pretty, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. So I went through a pretty, pretty quick transition, like mindset wise from single guy to married guy. And um, quickly realized that like, uh, Financially, I wasn't anywhere that I needed to be to be, uh, you know, a husband that wants to support their family. And so uh, we bought a house together, our first house together. Well, the plan was to buy it together, but my credit was so bad that the bank was like, nah, you, you can't be on the loan. Like, it's just got to be her. And so mm -hmm. that was like blow slash wake up call number one. And then, you know, married couples have conversations about kids and dream houses and school districts and all these things that I realized I couldn't afford to do or help with because I didn't have the money and I didn't have the uh, credit. And so um, uh, the, the long story short is I had a panic attack in the middle of the night after one of those conversations with my wife, woke up three in the morning, sweating and scared and uh, did the thing that everybody does when they have a panic attack at three in the morning about money is you start Googling how to make money. And so I just kept seeing articles about real estate, articles about landlording and owning rental properties. And then I came across a TED talk and the TED talk was called how to build your dream life through passive income. And I was like, cool. Yeah, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to watch that video. And it was just some kid. He had like 25 rental properties and he was financially free and he was talking about financial freedom. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. 
that's my thing. Man, I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> And so I was like, mind you, bad credit, no money. But I was about to buy a bunch of rental properties, right? And so, um, uh, and so I told my friend the next day that I was going to be a, a rental property investor, and and she gave me a box of books, and I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and then I got super duper hooked, and then just started consuming podcasts, videos, content, anything I could to learn about real estate and about. 90 days after that panic attack, I bought my first property. Um, That's fast. Yeah, man. I went, I went all in, man. I went all in. And so, um, so that's kind of the story that got me into the game. I bought that property um, pretty creatively because I didn't have any money. And so um, uh, I was uh, kind of in a position where, uh, so the, the big mindset shift for me when I first got started or I first started learning about investing was that like, I just decided I was going to tell people I was an investor. Like, I just wanted to put that energy out there. I, I knew I was going to be successful at being an investor. I'd, I'd made that decision literally at three in the morning. And so I said, all right, cool. We'll just start putting it out there. And so I was telling people I was an investor before I actually was, like before I officially was. And um, that's how I got my first deal. A buddy of mine kind of heard I was investing. He was in a t- difficult spot with the property. Came to me and said, hey, I need to sell my house. Here's what I'll sell it to you for. It was a good deal. And I was like, sweet, I'll buy that house. And then I had to go figure out how to come up with twenty thousand dollars in thirty days to close on it. And so, um, so uh, through working with some other investors and brainstorming, I came up. We came across the idea of a four hundred one k loan. I literally mm-hmm. borrowed the money from my wife's four hundred one k. I didn't have one again. I was bad with money, so mm-hmm. borrowed from my wife's four hundred one k. Got the down payment we needed. Bought the property. Immediately started cash flowing, and the cash flow, pay, you know, basically paid the note for borrowing against the 401k. And that was like my like aha light bulb moment because, you know, you go from this conceptual idea at three in the morning, then you borrow some monopoly money to buy a property. And then it turns into like actual dollars. Like that was like, that's when I was like, oh, this isn't just like something I'm going to do part-time. Like I'm going to figure out how to blow this thing up. And so that's when I just went nuts. Dude, I love it, man. The thing that hit me right there was is that it all starts with the mindset. You said it. I'm repeating what you said. And that's so true, right? If you don't believe that you are going to be able to do something, you're never going to be able to do it, right? One of, my, one of my business partner's favorite sayings or quotes is, you know, don't keep your business a secret, right? If nobody knows that you are an investor or that you're looking to buy houses, do you think deals are going to fall into your lap? No, it doesn't Absolutely work that not. way. But if you tell everybody, you know, I'm, I'm buying houses and I want the bad ones and, you know, bring me these leads and these bad houses and I want to look at them and I want to make offers on them. All of a sudden, now again, this may take a couple weeks, maybe even a couple months, but all of a sudden deals are going to start falling into your lap. So that's, that's the it, main, the main takeaway that I got from that. But that is amazing yeah, guys. Man. If you, if you are listening and watching this right now, take after Henry, have the mindset that you are an investor. And by just simply starting there, things will happen for you. So man, yeah, man. Henry, if, if you don't believe awesome. it, nobody else is going to believe it. Right. And that's exactly right. Life is about positioning, right? The people who are getting all the deals in real estate are the people who are positioned best to do it. Right. And positioning is both like there's physical positioning and there's mental positioning, right? So you can physically position yourself by like physically putting yourself in and around where other deals transact, right? So like, you know, online in certain spaces in certain groups, right? You can go to RIA meetings and networking groups, right? There's all this physical positioning, right? And, but there's also mental positioning, right? And so if you're putting that in the, in, in the atmosphere, like I am, a, I am a deal finder, I find deals, right? I am a real estate investor, people pick up on that. And then when they, like, if an investor picks up on that, like, because people like me, I find deals all the time that I may sell, right? And who am I going to sell them to? I'm going to sell them to the people that in my brain are closers, right? People who are going to buy deals and buy deals quickly. So when I get a deal, a few names come to mind, right? You want to position yourself in people's minds as that person so that they can call you and say, hey, you want to buy this thing? (laughs) How it works, man. I love it. So are you primarily a buy and hold investor then? Is that your, is that your niche for the most part? <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I tell, if I have to pick a niche, I tell people I'm a buy and hold investor, but I built my business around finding great deals. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't like, I don't limit the deals that I look at. 
to the only exit strategy of buy and hold because I learned early on that most investors think their biggest problem is it's hard to find deals. And so I said, all right, cool. If I can solve that problem, I'll never have to worry about money again. And then I can pick the best deals for myself. Okay, let's dive down a rabbit hole then. So what are you doing to find deals? And I agree yeah. 100%, real quick. Yeah. My business buys about 100 houses a year. Yeah. Two, anywhere between two and five of those are listed on the MLS on market. Yeah. Two to five out of 100, right? So right. 95 plus percent of the deals that we find are from marketing. They're from direct to seller efforts. Right. It's all about the deal finding. And the, cool, the beautiful thing about finding deals you know, and I've said this in previous episodes a ton, but, you know, if you get yourself into a deal, you now have all these exit strategy options. You can go rent it. You can, you can fix and flip it. You can wholesale it. You can burr method it. You can owner finance and you can do a hundred things with it, right? Because you have a deal, you have options, but if you don't have a deal, a lot of those right. doors aren't open. They're not even open to you. Right. So boom, I love it. What are you yeah, doing man. to find deals? I am, I guess you could say I'm a, uh, I guess you could, even though I'm only three and a half years into the game, I guess you could say I'm like I'm a, I'm a real estate marketing old school guy. So like I'm I'm mainly direct mail. I love direct mail. I'm good at direct mail, um, and so that's what I focus on the most. Um, I do, and then I have a Google AdWords campaign. So I've got a website, and then I rank my I rank my page toward the top when I get searches, mm -hmm. and that is my main source. I am venturing just now, venturing into. Uh, having a third party service do some cold calling for me just as an additional touch to my direct mail list. That's but awesome. man, I love, I love mail. It works for me. It works. I mean, it, I think when people say mail doesn't work, it's because they're not consistent and they don't mail in the right, they don't mail consistently. They don't mail in the right numbers and they don't follow up uh, appropriately. But I feel mm -hmm. like if you do all those things, any, any direct mail, or I'm sorry, any marketing method works if applied correctly. I love it. I agree completely. So direct mail and Google AdWords are the main sources. How are you, how are you mailing? Are you, and I don't mean like what service you're using, but um, are you driving for dollars to get leads or are you pulling lists of leads or both? Uh, a, a little bit of both. And so I've got my main marketing this past, I'd say six months has been driving for dollars. And I have a team of like, Right now, I've really only two drivers that drive consistently. I've got about eight drivers total, but not all of them drive consistently. I've got two guys that drive consistently every week and they identify a bunch of houses. Um, and then I, uh, and so I pay them for every lead that they find me. And then I pay them a bonus if I close on that house. And so most of my mail has been a driving for dollars list, but I also have lists that I pulled that's in my mail circulation as well. Um, Man, I love it. And so you're pulling some lists. You're doing mostly D for D, at least recently. And you got yourself a team. Man, that's phenomenal. So once you get those leads, you are paying them you know, to bring the leads in the door. And then you're giving them bonuses when you close on those. And I'm assuming it's regardless of what the exit is. Correct. Yeah. If it's a deal, nine, it's a deal. Nine, right? nine times out of 10, I don't decide what I'm doing with a house until after I own it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. That's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so he's built the business on finding deals, guys. Real estate marketing, he's very specific into direct mail and Google AdWords, right? I love it. D for D plus some list polling um, is how he is doing or finding the leads to actually mail to. Google AdWords is more of an inbound thing, right? It's a pay-per-click and SEO type of a play. Um, so that's awesome. Very, very cool. And you've only been at this, you said, for what, three years? Three years, 10 months. Man, how do you know that? Uh, because I just quit my day job and I had to count up the, the, the exact months it took me to do it. Nice. Congrats on quitting the day job, man. I appreciate it. That's cool. Have you, uh, have you, have you replaced the day job income yet? Yeah, man. Uh, between the, the, the somewhat, uh, it's not differently. Like I could have retired sooner. I didn't, I didn't want to slow down my scaling of my investment business, right? And so what I what helped me scale quickly is the fact that I had a nine to five that was going to feed my family. And so the money I was making from cash flow from my rentals and the money I was making from doing uh, fix and flips and things like that, I was able to just reinvest into going and buying more property. And I didn't want to slow that down. And so I didn't leave my day job when I had enough doors to leave my day job because I wanted to keep growing. 
Uh, I left my day job when my uh, courses and coaching business replaced my day job income so that I didn't have to leverage my, my investment business. Man, that is such a, that is so smart. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, when you have a W-2, you can get loans pretty easily, right? Oh, but man. if you, yeah. if you, you know, and, and if you quit your job without having the W-2, you can still get loans, but there's a big catch there. But if you haven't had your business operating for more than, you know, two or three years and you haven't filed the, the appropriate tax paperwork for two or three years, the yeah. banks aren't, aren't going to look at your business as being, you know, something that is lendable, right? Mm -hmm. They don't put a lot of trust in it. So keeping that day job is often a, a it's, it's a good thing to do what until you have a couple of years under your belt. But in this scenario, you actually replaced the, the day job with coaching and courses. Um, and then it sounds like the, uh, the rentals are just kind of icing on the cake. So let's talk about the rental portfolio. How many doors do you have? Do you, do you count doors? Do you count properties? I count so doors. And so forth. Count and doors. It, okay. It's got to be paying me. If it pays me, I count it. Got it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. 65 doors. 65 doors. Boom. That is awesome. And are you, um, are you typically trying to find multis? Are you, are you looking for singles? What's the bread and butter for Henry? Uh, so my portfolio, my largest property is a 12 unit. And then I have, I have a 12 unit, an eight unit, a five unit, um, a fourplex, a bunch of duplexes and some singles is probably how the, the breakdown goes. Um, I love duplexes, um, uh, duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes. Those are great. I'm not huge into like, I don't know that I'm going to jump into the large apartment community type investing. Um, I know there's great returns there, but part of the reason why I love what I do is um, I love the, the, you know, people call them warm fuzzies. Like I love driving through neighborhoods and seeing the impact that I've had on like the homes in those neighborhoods. I love seeing families out in the yards of homes that I flipped. I love like I love the impact of kind of that small to mid-level um, residential real estate, like the social impact of it. And I don't necessarily get that in the large scale multifamily space. It's more of a, I mean, it's not that small multifamily, not that small uh, residential real estate isn't a business, but large scale multifamily real estate is, it's, it's big business. It's just a different feel. It's just not my niche, it's not something that gives me the warm fuzzies. Me neither, so I, man. I love I love the residential real estate, man. I love seeing the impact that I have on my community, and I love uh, uh, you know. So I'll, I'll stick with that for sure. I love it, man. I'm in the same boat. I don't have any. I used to have a ten family. Sold. I did a burr. I did a reverse burr on it, mm -hmm. and uh, flipped every unit, raised the rent, increased the value by two hundred and fifty grand. You know, put about eighty or ninety in it. So I wanted to capture that cash. I, I kind of regret selling it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but as of today, I'm, I'm right behind you, man. I got about 50 doors. Yeah, man. Um, most of mine are singles. Yeah. Um, I do have a couple twos and a couple fours, but as of right now, I think the four, actually I have a five or a six family, but other than that, mostly twos and fours. And, and I would say the majority of my holdings are single family residential. I'd yeah, say 70% give or take is yeah. um is actually so. singles so we're very similar in the uh you know in the whole buy and hold game i love it man i think that's really yeah. really cool that's awesome so tell us a little bit about uh about your group your coaching group and i know you said you had mentioned that you have some courses as well i'm super curious to learn more about those yeah man so i'll kind of tell you the story behind them and then we can talk about kind of what they Let's are do it. so so um kind of as my social media following grew so let's rewind back even further. So at, I told you about that first deal and how I realized how powerful real estate was. And so at that same time, I immediately felt this like calling to share this information with as many people as possible. Um, a lot, a, a lot because of, you know, me being, uh, you know, a, a black man, financial education, is not something that is, is taught in, it's definitely not taught in schools, but there's also, there's usually sometimes, and there's not really a matriarch in the family that has this, this education, right? And, and that goes for lots of families, but in, in, in our community, that's, that's, it's even more so. And so I sure. was like, 
how do I get this information to people so that others can try to do what I'm doing and make a positive impact in their communities and change their lives and change their family's lives at the same time, right? And so I immediately started a social media and, and just like at first I was just posting, you know, before and after pictures and I, I try to post as much tips and tricks. And so I give tons of free game out on my social media and that kind of got attention. And then as I started to get on different, like I was on the Bigger Pockets podcast and I was on uh, Fox News, I did some TV shows. And so as my, as my, you know, notoriety grew, so did my page. And then I just started getting, and I try to help as many people as possible. So people would ask me questions. Mm -hmm. uh, in my DMs or people, and I would do consultations with people and I would just get the same two questions over and over again. Like everybody wanted to know how I was finding all my deals. Everybody wanted to know how I was financing all my deals because I was growing so quickly. And so in order to kind of, kind of pare down on the calls I was taking, I just created the two courses, one on a beginner's guide to finding great real estate deals. And which is just my blueprint for how I find all my deals, like my direct mail strategy, step-by-step is in that course. And so I created that course and then I created the how to finance deals with little to no money utilizing, utilizing small banks. So part of the way I've been able to grow my business is I use uh, small bank loans and I get typically get 100% financing on most of my deals. So I'm very, very, it's very infrequent that I have to bring money to the table. And so I wanted to just be able to share those things with people so that people could see it's not difficult stuff. Like you don't have to bring a bunch of money to the table to buy, buy and hold. People think you got to start in this business and be a wholesaler and then work your way up. It's not the case. You can get into buy and hold to get started and there's ways to do it. And so I teach those things in those two courses. Um, and it really, it was just, I just put them out there as a means to like, when people ask me those questions, I point them to those courses. They take the course. If they have more questions, then I'll take a consult with them. Um, and what happened is like, there was just a big demand for it. People were eating it up. And so like we were the volume of courses that we were selling was kind of through the roof. And so um, then I decided, all right, well, I need to do some sort of coaching program, right? So that I can not only just provide the information to people at the entry level, um, but also like walk people through it who want to be walked through it. And so my coaching program, my inner circle program is uh, coaching with me weekly. And I have nine students right now. And we literally, every week we meet, I talk with each student on the call. We build a plan for how they're going to get to their success. So they discuss their goals with me. And then we try to build a plan to get to their success. And then I, and then I help them execute on that plan. And so the goal in my coaching program is to help people get to their freedom number, right? Figure out how many doors you need to achieve your goal of financial freedom or whatever your goal is. We build a plan around that and we help you execute on that. So those are, my, those are, those are what I got. Dude, that's amazing. So how to find deals, how to finance the deals. Those are the main questions. And yep. you build some courses around that. The Beginner's yep. Guide to Finding Deals and how to finance those, of course. And then you also have a third course about on house hacking, right? Yeah, so I have a, I have a third course on uh, house hacking blueprint. And so I kind of built that one because like as I started my real estate journey, so right after that the first deal I told you about, I decided like, you know, if you're going to be an investor, you know, the best place to get started is where you live, right? Put your money where your mouth is. And so- right. I, uh, that home that I told you my wife and I bought, we sold and we moved into a duplex and we lived in one unit and we rented the other unit. But what that did was it eliminated most of my mortgage payment, which is our biggest bill. And it allowed us to save that money every month. And so what we did was instead of, so we were used to paying about 1200 bucks for a mortgage. It was cut down to like a couple hundred bucks because we were house hacking. So I had a thousand bucks a month just uh, extra money because I wasn't paying that mortgage anymore. And so we would just put a thousand bucks a month away in the bank, into the bank. So we kept paying that mortgage we were normally paying. We were just paying it to ourselves now. Mm -hmm. Our house hacked for two years. And nice. then after two years, what I was able to do was take that money that we saved and put a down payment on our dream house where we live now. And then we moved into that dream house. We rented the second unit that we were living in and the cash flow from that duplex now pays most of the mortgage here at my dream house. Right. And I use the awesome. money that I was saving every month as my down payment. And so now, you know, I, I, I'm able to afford to live in this house that, you know, would have taken me years and years to be able to get to the traditional way. And I got here in two years by house hacking. Like, so house hacking changed my life outside of like, yeah, I got 65 doors, but those doors don't have anything to do with the house that I live in now. They don't pay for this house. Like 
it's just the impact of real estate. And so I wanted to put a course together to show people that like, you don't gotta have 65 doors if you don't want to. Like you can buy one duplex, you can buy two duplexes, you can house hack two duplexes and that'll get you into your dream home or get you the money you need to travel or whatever it is that you wanna use that money for. Like house hacking can really be a stepping stone towards your freedom, like a big launch pad towards your freedom. And a lot of people just don't aren't aware of how powerful it is. And so I put a course together for that. Amen. I love it, dude. That's I did some house hacking uh, out of college. Yeah. And uh, man, it's such a great entryway to get in. And I love that you had mentioned that you don't necessarily you know, need to have a ton of doors, right? You can start right. with one. So I started with a four bedroom house in college yeah. and rented three of the beds out, right? Three yeah, of the other bedrooms out. And then the second house I bought, I did the same thing. I moved into one. It was a three bedroom. So then, yeah. so then I had all four of the previous one rented at that point, right? And then I moved into a three bedroom and I rented two of those other bedrooms out. Yeah. And I did that twice. And man, it, it was such a great way to get started um, because you were having somebody else pay that mortgage down for you. It reduces your cost of living to basically zero. And then once you move on or move out, um, you are going to start cash flowing. And in some some areas you may you may be cash flowing living it getting paid right? to live man getting paid to live all right it's amazing it's such a great strategy i absolutely love that very cool well guys in the show notes we will drop a link to um so to, to where you can go find more information on these courses that henry has put together um as well as a um a, a page to go learn more about henry's inner circle coaching program. And um, Henry does weekly calls with his group. And I love that you are in the buy and hold space. I said it in the beginning, I'm going to say it again now, man, there's not that many people that are out there coaching, you know, on this particular niche. Most people are wanting to teach you, you know, wholesaling or how to, how to find those deals. All the, all time. the sexy stuff, man. All quick the sexy checks, stuff. Quick checks and HGTV finishes, man. That's what people want to sell them. Um. That's exactly right. Yeah. But I really, really, I love what you're doing. Thank I mean, you. truly rental properties are my passion as well. I've been in the game yeah. for 16 years at this point. Ooh. I know. I started you when I was bet. 20. Started when I was 20, man. So you I've still been look 20. <laughs> oh, I wish. I'm 36, <laughs> man. I wish. I wish. That's dope, man. That's but uh, dope. my my passion is the it's the buy and holds. It truly is. It's landlording. Um so a couple more, a couple quick more questions for you here yeah, before we wrap up. Andrew. Are you are you managing your own properties, or are, are do you outsource it, or how, who's doing the management? No, we manage, man. I manage all my own properties. So when I say all, uh, the 12, 16 of those units are about an hour away. Those I have with property management because I don't want to have to drive there. Um, sure. And then I've got twenty five of my. Six, uh, 65 doors our own 50 50 partnership mm -hmm. and then my partner and i we split those in half and i manage half of those he manages half of those nice. and then the other 30 some odd i own on my own i manage all those so i probably totally manage 35 about you know 40 45 50 doors somewhere in there myself and then I, love the rest it. I didn't even ask you what market are you in northwest arkansas northwest arkansas so, okay Fayetteville, near the university of arkansas nice yep so, you, so the majority of your of what you are or what you own and manage is in Arkansas. All in Arkansas, yeah. All in Arkansas, cool. Yeah, I think I just bought my first deal in uh, in Missouri, which is about okay. An hour away. That's where I'm at. I'm out of St. Louis. Okay, yeah, I just bought a deal in uh, Joplin. Joplin, Joplin's a, yeah. It's a great yeah. area. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, man, Henry, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show to get to know you more. Guys, check out the show notes to learn more about Henry's courses, as well as, um, as a place to where you can go learn more information about his actual program. If you are looking to, to, to be a buy and hold investor, and really, if you're looking for financial freedom, if you're looking to replace your income, if you're looking to live for free, if you are looking to take more trips, these are all the things that we just talked about, right? Right. But real yeah. estate will provide that right? And having the right coach and the right mentor is going to speed it up for you big time. Right. So I, I love everything that Henry's doing. And I just, I'm super happy to have Henry on the show here today. Henry, a couple parting words for the, for the listeners and the viewers 
If you are starting out, you are brand new, what would be your word of advice to, yeah, to, to man. these individuals? Yeah, man. I love, so new investors, what I tell them is real estate, man, uh, it's super powerful and it's super flexible. That's one of the amazing benefits of real estate. There's a million ways to get in the game. There's a million, million ways to make money with real estate. Um, but that means there's a million distractions when you're getting started. And so what I like to tell people is if you're getting started, there's two things you should focus on. One, what does a good deal look like in my market, right? The, the lifeblood of your business as an investor, no matter what strategy you use, buy and hold, fix and flip, wholesale, wholetail, all of those things require you to find a good deal. If you don't have a good deal, none of those strategies work. So step one, learn what a good deal looks like in your market. How do you do that? get around other investors who are doing deals. So go to RIA groups, get in Facebook groups with other investors, and then just start asking investors, say, hey man, I see you just did a couple of deals. What were the, what'd your last deal look like? What were the numbers? You know what You know what we love talking about? Deals that we made money on. So, so like, get them asking questions about their deals. It'll help you build rapport with people who are in the business who are successful. It'll help you build relationships and they'll give you the numbers. They'll tell you what good deals look like. And you'll start, as you start to hear more and more, you'll start to understand what good deals look like in your market. Once you learn what a good deal looks like in your market, second thing is you need to figure out how you're going to find your deals, right? In some markets, you can hop on the MLS and you can buy a deal with a realtor. In a lot of markets, you can't do that. Um, there's off-market deal finding strategies. I do mail. Some people do cold calls. Some people do text messages. Some people do emails, right? There's tons of ways to find deals. Figure out which one of those methods fits you, your budget, and your personality, right? Those are the things that are important. Then pick one of those strategies and start implementing it to find deals. That's all you should worry about. What's a good deal look like in my market? How am I going to find deals? Get started doing that. Once you get a deal, you're going to be so pumped up to figure out everything else you need to do to be able to secure that deal, that all that stuff will fall into place. If you worry about all that stuff on the front side, it doesn't matter because you don't have a deal for it anyway. So what's a good deal look like in my market? How do I find deals? Boom. You nailed it, Henry. That was amazing. Guys, real estate, I'm going to repeat what he just said. I was taking notes. Real estate is super powerful and super flexible. But that also means lots of distractions. I cannot stress that enough. That is so true. It is super powerful and super flexible. But that also means a lot of distractions. So two things. What does a good deal look like in my market? And everybody's in a different market. So figure out what that looks like in your market. And how do you do it? You get around other investors that are doing deals. I can't stress that enough. I tell to all my students, network, network, network. Get out, hit the RIAs, go to meetup.com. If you don't know what, where they're at, go to meetup.com, find these groups. Even if it's two or three guys getting coffee on Tuesday morning, show up. Right. Even if you're new, show up. Right. And if you can find the big two and 300 people groups, go to those two. And then number two is figure out how you are going to find deals. Figure out what a deal looks like and then figure out how you're going to find those deals and start doing it. Do not focus on anything else. All of the chips will fall into place. Henry, I could not have said that better. That was amazing. All right, guys, go follow Henry over on his socials. Henry, where, where do we go to follow you? And what's your favorite social? Yeah, Instagram, uh, at the Henry Washington, T-H-E Henry Washington. Got it. I'm taking notes here for the show notes. So if you guys are looking at the show notes here, Instagram is Henry's favorite place and it's at the Henry Washington. Go check him out. Henry, thank you so much for coming on the show. Guys, if you are more, if you are interested in, um, in, in some of Henry's courses and or coaching program, again, we're going to drop those links down in the show notes. And uh, Henry, again, I'm just super grateful to have your time today. Thank you for coming on my show. And uh, man, this has been awesome. We share so many of the same uh, beliefs and ideals about the buy and hold game and just how real estate can provide freedom. You have found yourself freedom with it. I have freedom with it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a break from a beach vacation. Hey, Do man. this right now. And I'm just hey, so happy to have this opportunity. So again, Henry, thanks for coming on the show. Guys, check out the show notes for more information. And until next time, signing off. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe 
to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.